That is so very easy. My name is Laura and it's really nice to be able to travel with our own mug and our own plate. Not only is it environmentally friendly, it's a lot nicer to drink out of and eat off of. However, carrying them around this way is not so convenient. But carrying it around this way is definitely a lot more fun. This bag's going to fit a small 7-inch plate and a good size coffee cup. In a description I will put this and this has a template shape and a list of supplies that you're going to need. This template needs to be cut out on the fold so you're going to have a full circle. And we're going to start and make that bottom of the bag first so we will need this template shape. For the inside of the bag I'm going to be using a foam. Now this is the sewable foam. The one I'm using is from Fairfield. It's called Support. It has no adhesive on it, so it's a sew-in. I don't want anything to break, so I'm going to be using two layers of foam throughout the project. Start with two pieces of foam, about 10 inch square. We're going to trim it down to the circle shape after, but we're going to quilt it first. Take two pieces of fabric, and they can be about 10 inches. Place the two pieces of foam in and do some quilting. I'm just going to do a couple of straight rows of stitching. I'm going to be using a denim needle and make my stitches a little bit bigger so I'm going to be able to get through that foam with no problem. Trace the template on top of that quilted square and it's good from both sides. Stitch along that line and then stitch an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch in the inside of that line. Just take a pair of scissors and cut to the outside of that line all the way around. That stitching it has held that together and has compressed it. To compress it a little bit more, do a zigzag all the way around. This is going to be the bottom of the bag. It's going to support the plate and the cup. The zigzag is also going to help this turn under. The bottom is now done. The bag is going to be a drawstring bag, so we're going to make two casings to fit in the top of the bag. We're going to need two pieces of fabric, 5 inches by 15 and a half inches. We need to put a rolled hem on each side. I find the easiest way is to make a 1 inch mark on both sides and then press over on that 1 inch mark. And then while you're at the iron, tuck that top piece in. So you still have that one inch mark, but the seam is tucked inside. So you have a half inch rolled hem on each side. This is now 13 and a half inches by five inches. And stitch that rolled edge down. Press the strip in half and sew all the way down, giving yourself a one inch seam allowance. You'll have a little pocket going all the way down and then the two open flaps and that raw edge together. This one inch seam is going to be a decoration on the top of the bag. The casing is going to be made with this open piece when it's sewn onto the bag. So I have two casings. For the bag, I need two pieces of fabric, 11 inches by 28 and a half inches. And on one end of each of the fabrics, press over half an inch. I have that half inch press seam going on one side. Next we'll be sandwiching these casings in between this fabric. That open edge is going to go along the raw edge and match it up to the fold. I have a half inch sticking out. The next piece, those raw edges, will match the raw edges. You're going to have about an inch here. Flip the second side of the fabric over top so you're encasing the casing. Match up the raw edges leaving that one inch out and pin those four layers together. This end where we have that half inch fold needs to be a finished seam and it's really easy to do. We're going to be able to do this all in one step without having to leave the machine. Take one side and have that half inch fold match that edge. The bottom piece just fold it over. So that bottom piece has come up. Stitch a quarter inch all the way down to the end so that you're sandwiching all of those layers together. 
And when you come to that one inch hanging out, just stitch right off the end. We can fold the fabric over so that the wrong sides are touching. That extra one inch is going to have a finished edge. And when we get to that edge that has a fold over, you'll have that fold of the casing. And both of those folds are inside, but it has a nice finish on both ends. Take the fabric and press it on both sides away from the casing going down. The next thing we're going to do is quilt it or pat it. I'm going to use that foam again, two pieces of it. They are both 10 inches by about 29 inches. They can be a little bit bigger and hang out here, that's fine. Because I'm using two layers, I want to compress my edges. I'm going to match up those edges and do a zigzag down both of the long seams. With my two long edges compressed and stitched together, straighten one edge. Now I'm going to put this double layer of batting inside. That straight edge is going to go that half inch in. Move the top up and have that as close as you can to the top of the casing, leaving that half inch. Fold it back down. Just by smoothing this with your hands, you're going to be able to have a nice flat seam up at the top. Because we compress that foam, it's going to fit. We have a little bit extra at the bottom. And we have some of the raw edges of all that foam and that end coming out. This is going to be a finishing edge. We need to quilt this and when it's quilted, this edge is going to fit inside this little channel that we are making. So it's important that you don't stitch closed that half inch. Match up that folded edge and pin. I don't want to do a lot of quilting on this. I just want to hold all of these layers together. And because I used a stripe fabric, I'm going to be following the lines. I have all those rows of quilting done. Trim off one end and compress all the layers. What is going to happen is this compressed seam is going to fit inside this little opening we made. That seam is going to go in about a half an inch. You could take the corner and just clip that little point off and it's going to fit in a lot better on both those sides. Just snip a tiny little piece off. So that zigzag edge is going to fit inside and pin those layers together. By starting that batting a half inch in, you're not overlapping any more batting or foam. So when you look at the inside of the bag, that zigzagged edge is going to lay right up against the foam. And that folded edge is going to give you a clean finish. So I have a folded edge on one side and the folded edge on the other side. We can choose the size of the bag that we want. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add in this top pull. By pulling this in, we're going to be able to judge the size of the bag we want because we could cut this down if we want it a little bit shorter. You're going to need two yards of rope. I'm going to use a fine rope, but you can use any rope you want. So one of these little pieces of rope is going to go in so the loop will be on one side and the two ends on the other. For the other side of the bag, it's just going to be reverse. So you're going to have a loop coming on this side and two ends coming out on this end. I like this bobkin from Clover. It has a flexible arm, a point to it, but it has a little clip on the end. So you're going to lift up the one end and that clip or that claw opens up and in that claw I can put the ribbon or in this case this tiny little roping and that's going to hold that really secure for me. So I'm going to put the rope through the casing that is closest to the bag and I can pull that right through to the second side. And I'm going to loop it right over and put it right back in to the other side and just feed that little bobkin in. And that point comes back out, I'm going to be able to take it out. 
So I have one piece that loops all the way around and tie the ends together. So I have the one side done. Now I need to loop to the other side. Now this time I'm going to go from this side and I'm using that same hole, the one closest to the bag, not this top piece. Feed that right in, coming out the one side, thread it right through the next side. And as I continue pulling, the rest of that little rope is going to come out on the other side. When this is pulled, it's going to come together. Once the strings are on, we're going to be able to decide how big do we want this bag. The bottom is already made, and now we can choose the size of the bag. We can make this bag shorter or leave it tall. If you're going to carry your mug this way, when the cup is inside, you have a little room up at the top. If you want your mug to lie flat, then this is a lot of space. You might not want this much space. We can cut this shorter. Just roll that edge until you get a size that you like. The area around is going to remain the same. It's this height that you can change. So depending on your mug, you're going to be able to change this measurement. Once you come to the size you want, you're going to be able to trim off the extra. I'm going to put a pin and mark the measurement that I want. If you know starting that you're going to have a short bag, instead of doing this measurement 11 inches, you can change the measurement to somewhere around 7 inches. And I'm going to cut from the bottom up. I'm going to take 3 inches off. I'm going to do a little row of hand stitching and stitch this layer onto the top and then turn it around and do a row of hand stitching to attach the back. I can now sew the bottom piece onto the bag. Just walk that circle all the way around the edge. I like to hand stitch first all the way around once so that I'm able to remove those pins and I can squish and move that bag as it's needed. At the machine, I'm going to put my hand in the inside of this bag. That way I can keep all of the fabric flat. Towards the needle, I'm going to be able to flatten the bag down with my hand. The first row is going to be a zigzag to hold all of those layers together. Do a couple inches at a time and then stop and just readjust. And that zigzag stitch is just going to hold all of these layers together. Now I can do a row of straight stitching just to make the bottom of the bag nice and neat. When you've done all the rows of stitching, you're done the bag. And when you turn it right side out, you can push the seams going up into the bag, and that keeps that bag nice and flat. With the bag done, I can now load it. I do like to put a clear Ziploc bag inside of my container. That way if I don't get my plate and my cup washed before I leave, I can put in that and that keeps this bag clean. Put in my plate and a matching napkin, my mug, and I still can put other things in here if I want. Clinch that bag closed and I'm ready to go. Having those two layers of foam inside really gives whatever is in here a lot of protection. Regardless if you leave it the bigger version and make it a lunch bag or a smaller version and have it for a cup and a plate. So regardless if you're bringing this to your local quilt store, your guild or to work a lot more fun to carry this way and they stay very well protected. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.